that, as Raven said, if you followed it day by day, things were not going well. It wasn't as if, oh, he promised it and he did it. No, he promised it and then he really didn't want to do it for two years. <laughs> we beat him up and then he did do it. But what happened is now you see the media in America talk a lot about how the gay community is, is really the only uh, left-wing or you know, progressive constituency that got anything it wanted or anything significant out of the president, and it's because they were a pain in the ass, as we say, for the last three years. You know, the question is, and I, and I mean, Raven can talk about this, and also you know, feel free to jump in for questions, because I think this is only until 9.50 or something we're talking, but we like questions. Americans sort of do more panels like that. But I don't know to what degree, why, why do you think we didn't get the successes on other progressive issues that we got on gay issues? I mean, because I don't think, I don't think the blogs fell down, you know, that they didn't do their job on other issues like healthcare. Because the blogs were heavily involved, and maybe you can even talk about that with Jane or, or Adam, you know, Adam's PCCC. But, but for some reason on the gay issues, it worked, having these independent players just bam, bam, bam all the time. But on the other progressive issues, it didn't. Well, I, I guess my, my view on that would be that uh, there were a range of issues that were considered. I mean, there were some you know significant environmental policies that we didn't get around climate change. There were uh, there was obviously the landmark healthcare bill, bill which was passed, but uh, early versions of it that they started with at the beginning were significantly better. And the president's promises were significantly better that he didn't he didn't even push for. Right. Um, so I think that it, there was a you know comprehensive immigration bill that was sort of promised to the Latino community, uh, and there were there were a number of other things. But I think that in some of those cases, uh, it was that people weren't united enough around what they were asking for. One thing that the, the gay community did very well is there was a whole host of issues they could have been pushing for, but they all chose to focus on one thing. And then when that one thing was achieved, they would move on to the next thing. But there wasn't a lot of divergence in terms of what everyone from the activists to the advocacy organizations to the donor class of people was asking for. Um, for some of the other issues, it was sort of all over the map. The other, the other main problem, I think, is that there, there was no large moneyed interest that was against gay rights, per se. With healthcare, Absolutely. you're fighting. Right. The religious right was against us, but they they don't have the same kind of money that business has fighting, you know, a civil rights law or something. Right, um, and then immigration. There was some parts of the the business community were um, for that actually because it would have benefited them, but you encountered uh, a lot of racist elements of our society actually that you know kind of caused strange splits um, on that. So. Uh, I, I think that the ab the absence of a moneyed interest, or if you had one, neutralizing it, um, and the fact that you were so focused was one of the reasons for the success there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't. I, if I can sort of jump in, nope. I don't know to what degree we've got a Chris. I'll just say, I don't know to what degree you guys. I mean, do you sense anything similar in Sweden in terms of even though now you're in the minority, you know, in the government. What's the relationship between sort of the you know, maybe progressives in general and the party? I mean, is it one where you're sort of feeling like, you know, what is this party doing? Or I mean, to some degree, we were pretty happy in the minority, <laughs> you know, relatively. And I think we always sort of feel in the states that the Democrats are better in the minority. They fight a little better. But in power, you know, eh, I don't know. I'm sorry, but you had raised your hand anyway. Do you want to? Oh, I was just curious about the, the difference between like a national and the state by state thing, because I know, I mean, like uh, women's rights, for instance, have a lot of setbacks, but that was usually on a state by state basis. Right, right. I think one of the, the, the things that the, the right has done in a very insidious way, uh, almost below the radar of a lot of online activists, is they've really been intensely focused on winning victories at the state level. I mean, a lot of our focus has always been on national politics. It's just, there's more attention on it, it's sexier, there's more going on, but they, they're the ones that have been, you know, getting judges installed, uh, school winning boards. school the boards. The religious right, probably 20 years ago, started the strategy of going after local school boards. And I don't even quite understand how our education system works, but basically, you know, in each town, you elect people to the school board that is almost, 
you know, even stronger than an advisory committee deciding what textbooks the school will use and things like this. And they put all these crazy right-wing religious people, but I mean, crazy right-wing religious. I'm not saying there are conservative who believe in God. No. They're the religious right, as we call them, on these school boards, and they started right, fighting. Uh, they didn't want evolution taught in the schools, or at the very least, they wanted you know, the theory of creation by God taught equal to evolution and all these kind of crazy things. But it was smart. I mean, they started 20 yeah. years ago, and now they've got a very interesting control at the, at the basic level that a lot of us on the left don't have. So what, what they've been doing is, is they, even though that they, they lost landmark, you know, court decisions or, uh, you know, even major pieces of legislation that, you know, have been the national law of the land, they started chipping away at that at the state level to where you now have uh, a pretty unequal distribution of some states that have, you have these rights, some states you don't. Uh, and then that, that allows them to just build and, and get further and further because as it becomes the norm, people just go, okay, well, that's, that's the way it is. And then, you know, they can go for the next extreme thing, which doesn't seem as extreme anymore because they've already won something. So, you know, in theory, I mean, some of the, some of the stuff you might um, have been seeing in the news is all this ridiculous debate on contraception in our country, which is just insane that we're talking about this in 2012. But how they got right, there well, is... Just, no, the issue is whether hospitals run by Catholic organizations, but they're still public hospitals, you know, for the people, whether, what was it, whether they have to include contraception in the insurance policies of their own employees. I believe mm -hmm. that was it. Whether their employees are Catholic or not Catholic. And of course the Catholic hospital, or the Catholic bishops, I should say, are saying, oh, that would just be, you know, against God if we, if we let, you know, Sort of women's health care, <laughs> you know, be covered by insurance and, and whatever. And the Obama administration said, no, you know, we're going to do this. The irony is that Mitt Romney, the Republican challenger, also agreed with the same policy, you know, years ago. Now he's pretending he doesn't, but but that'll be an ongoing theme in this campaign. <laughs> is Romney basically being a Democrat? But yeah, the way that the way that they've been able to get there though is that they have worked so hard for a number of years to. Uh, make abortion basically something that people can't do in a lot of states effectively. It's not illegal, but if you don't have a doctor that can perform it and that doctor constantly gets death threats, then it's effectively doesn't exist. One clinic in South Dakota. Yeah, and there's maybe three doctors in uh, Mississippi, none of them live in the state, and they constantly get death threats. Yeah, I forgot which state, one of Mississippi or Alabama or Louisiana, one of, one of these th three southern states that typically are very south. The governor is trying to close down the last abortion clinic in the state. I mean, but because they've essentially won on that, they're now moving on to, to contraception. So that's where that comes from. I think from. we have a question. Yes, yes. John, uh, you said that uh, Barack oh, Obama came through uh, about uh, gay issues. You got, you got, Somewhat, yes. Yeah, you got uh, don't speak as a, you know. Don't ask, don't tell, which was the military, ask. the ban on gays in the military. You got it repealed, taken back. But uh, what happened after? Well, you know, <clears throat> I mean, what, it's interesting what happened after. And I think, you know, some of the grassroots activists may not appreciate the degree to which I think Obama has done a good deal on gay rights now, like in the last year and a half. Now, what's interesting about this, again, to sort of link it to you guys and what kind of things you may look for in the party you know, after you win, if you win, in two years, is what we're seeing now on gay issues, but again, it could be on any issue. And actually, he's doing it on other issues, too. What we're seeing now is lots of little ways that he's trying to help on gay issues. You know, uh, uh, executive orders that the president can sign that don't have to go to Congress that can at least affect the federal workforce. You know, giving federal employees more rights, whether it's you know, benefits for the partners of gay people or whatever. And, you know, in our country, uh, you know, the fe I, don't even, I don't even remember the size of the federal workforce, but it's huge you know, in our country. That would have a huge impact. Um, we're seeing it on a number of other issues now, women's issues and others now, where, you know, the White House has started this campaign that's obviously, you know, they're thinking about the election, called uh, We Can't Wait or It Can't Wait. And they're basically, it's a whole series of things they're trying to do that the White House can do through these executive statements that Cong you don't need Congress for. Well, these are things he should have been doing the first three years. And I think the problem, again, a lot of us have, but also something to think about for the future for you guys is, you know, 
Obama promised he would be a fierce advocate on gay issues. Well, he should have been a fierce advocate on everything. And what I mean by that is, you know, I think a good government, a, 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 you know, a good politician, should always be trying to think of every piece of legislation, what can we do for the, for the overall agenda we're, we're trying to do. In our country, you know, a Democrat would be, what can we do to help the climate? What can we do on gay rights? What can we do on women's rights? What can we do on immigration? The black community, unions, I mean, you know, labor, the, but the core issues, and they don't. And again, this is a Democrat, this is, gets to what Raven was saying about how the right wing will sit there and over 20 years, you know, go for a little bit, a little bit, a little, you know, a little you know, tranche, you say, frankly, you know, little slices, 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 until they have the whole loaf of bread. And the left wing likes to ignore something for a year or five years, and then we say, oh, let's have a vote this week on gay rights. Okay. Yeah. And right, Obama got his one big thing on gay rights, and now, you know, and then we kind of felt like, where is, where is he now? Well, on the gay stuff, because we continue to be a pain, he does keep doing lots of little things, but they do add up. And he's now doing it on a number of other issues because he's afraid about the re-election. But I think from day one, it would help him politically, but also be good for all of us, to keep pressure on the politicians to keep trying to do small good things for each community or each issue or however you define yourselves in your politics. You know, you, maybe you don't do it by community, I don't know, or, you know but, but that would help. Um, I don't know, is anybody else first? Yeah, I we had a question yeah. in the second row. We'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> He was talking earlier on about the frustration with the compromise from the president. And I think he, when he was elected, he was clearly uh, speaking about uh, uniting the, the country, uniting Republicans, uniting Democrats. And the country was actually struggling <coughs> when he was elected. Don't you think that was, uh, I mean, well, I think predictable it would be like this? A little bit. On the I think, isn't it what he promised? That what he can. Yeah, yeah, he he did he did uh, I think do that. I I I don't think that anyone that was working for him really thought that was more than just rhetoric, <coughs> though, because the 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 change on the scale he was promising is not something that you can get by half measure compromises. I mean, he was talking, you know, massive, large changes to society, and that was what was really. Uh, getting people excited, but he was also at the same time saying this this compromise, I'm going to fish, fix Washington, things like that. And I guess people just thought that was rhetoric, maybe that was really what, what he viewed. But I think even if you asked him, you know, at this point, um, you know, three, four years in, it, it what he wanted to do just isn't possible because the second that he got in office, the job the Republicans had was just oppose everything. Doesn't matter what it is, he could be saying the sky's blue, and they would say, no, it's not, it's green. And, and then they would fight him to the death over it. Uh, and they've done that uh, on every single issue, top to bottom, whether it made any common sense or not. And I think it, you know, it's okay if you, you go into office thinking, I'm going to change things, I'm going to compromise, I'm going to fix the system. But I think when you butt your head up against it over and over and over and over again, we just expected him to learn. We expected him to go, okay, these people are not going to get on board with my agenda. They're not going to be reasonable, even though four years ago, maybe they were supporting some of these positions themselves. And he needed to just go in and be aggressive in the same way that Bush was aggressive with his policies. And that's kind of, I think, what we were hoping for and didn't get, and that's where the frustration came from. Well, and I would go one step further, which is the, the promise wasn't just compromise. It was compromised to pass a national health care plan that would include a public option, which, I don't know what you call it, public insurance, basically, you know what I mean? Meaning I can get my insurance from the government and not just the private sector and actually get something good and cheap. He promised to compromise to do specific things on gay rights. He promised to use compromise to get climate change legislation passed. And what we found was the first couple years, he was very vested in compromise but it wasn't to get these goals. The compromise would always make him say, not always, but would often make him say, it's just gonna be really hard to get those goals, maybe we have to do something else. And, and he would say it at the very beginning of the, of the negotiation, and we'd say, what are you doing? So I mean, that was, it's a little nuanced, but that was the problem. It wasn't that he would tried really hard to get this promise, but used compromise. And I think that's also the way they like to spin it is that, oh, well, you just don't like compromise. You know, you crazy activists, all you want to do is fight. You, again, you don't understand politics.
you know. And it would, well, it one is, thing yeah. is it was done in advance too. So an example of that is at the time we were trying to pass a climate change bill. I mean, you'd expect that's a pretty major <coughs> undertaking for for a country to to do, and some compromise is going to be necessary. But before we even started debating <coughs> the bill, before there was any policy written that was being discussed and you know among people, um, Obama compromised by saying. Okay, oil companies, I'm going to use my executive order to open up drilling rights <laughs> all over the Gulf of Mexico <laughs> because I'm hoping that you're going to be on board with this bill. But he I'm did not this yet three written. weeks, three weeks before the British Petroleum oil spill. He came out and changed his view on the drilling in the sea and said, "I'm for it now. It'll get us lots of oil." When during the campaign he had said correctly, "It's not going to give us much oil at all." And three weeks later, we had the BP spill, which in a way was kind of funny. In which, a very, I mean, in a political way, it was funny. It was just sort of like, you know what? Once again, you decided to do this, and look what happened. You know, which I, I would argue is, is bad judgment. But if it, <laughs> if, it, too. if it, if it, you know, as or a general Trump. rule, opening up offshore drilling is, I think, a bad idea. But if it had been done in the context of, I have this bill, here's what it is, I need to get certain members of Congress on board, or I need to throw, a bone, to, get throw a bone to this industry or get something <laughs> yeah. else, yeah. then it would have been maybe more palatable. But if right. you just do it expecting that, Okay, I did right. something nice for you. Now do something nice for me. That's not the way it works. That was a lot of it, and that was a lot of it too. Right? Was that the idea was his idea coming in seemed to be that if he was nice and gave you what you wanted, or a big chunk of what you wanted, you would be nice and give me what I want. But he didn't actually sit there and say, "I'm going to do the offshore drill." That's why right. I remember that was a big a big scandal about the offshore drilling was he didn't ask for anything. He didn't get anything in return. He simply changed his mind and gave them something huge that they wanted. And it wasn't as if he had a deal. You know, I will do the offshore drilling and you're going to give me my health care plan or whatever. No, just did it. And then it blew up in his face. And um, it's happened on issue after issue. Yeah. I think we have a question in the lady in blue. Yeah. Oh, lady in blue. Well, <laughs> no, I was just thinking about linking it to what you said about linking it to it. Because I think we to have here, a big yeah. problem on the left um, in terms of rather than starting with telling a story and like getting people to understand your story and getting right. them to like, you know, you explain an issue and then get people to go along with the way that you're explaining the issue. You're sort of reacting instead of acting. And so you have the thing like where the conservatives are like, oh, well, this is our way of viewing the world. Right. And then the left go, oh no, that's wrong. <clears throat> and then so you have, and you keep having that and then you never, it's hard to get anywhere with an agenda because you're like, well, can we tell our story instead of letting them actually I was going to say, John, he was here. Worth, are you hiding him back somewhere? There he is. I see a hand waving from here. I mean, it's funny. This reminds me of something. You were talking about, we were talking last night at some bar way above the city somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> he took us to a very nice 26 floor. But we were talking, and John was talking about how, uh, you know, the, the success of the Pirate Party and, and what lessons, and how it was unique. And I mean, I want him to actually comment on this really quick, but it reminds me what you're saying about how it was very unique and what lessons you could learn in Sweden from it in that, they won not based on the typical uh, platform of a fringe party or a protest party, which is, you know, we hate immigrants, um, we hate, but it's sort of like, you know, who do we hate kind of fringe, rather than in this case, it was, you know, pushing for something. I don't know, John, well, also maybe linking it to Sweden, because John's spent a lot of time, he speaks Swedish and has spent a lot of time here, so he really understands, I think, from a foreign perspective. Well, I, I don't want to kind of go too much into depth because part of this is going to be in my speech later on. I was going to say, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> but, but essentially, Give a preview. That finding ways and means, and for me, the Pirate Party, particularly in Germany, maybe less so these days in Sweden, they at least managed to find a way of having a positive alternative message for appealing to younger voters. And importantly, by bringing party activists into the policy making within the party, which means the big challenge that major mainstream parties have never quite managed to get over that, get over that issue. Anyway, definitely more about the Pirate Party in my speech later on. Well, well, but it's an interesting question for the net roots because in talking to you last <laughs> night, you know, I started thinking about how so much of our blogging is negative, and either it's either it's having to go after the party itself. And 20 years ago, a friend of mine in Senator Kennedy's office, who was you know, Senator Kennedy, was a big hero on the left in the states, told me, you know, you'll have to spend so much more time beating up your friends than beating up your enemies. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, trust me, you know, you'll see what I mean. And it's true over the years working for organizations and, and, and working on my own now, you spend more time than you think having to go after your own members of Congress than, or your own organizations than the guys on the right. 
because to make them do the right thing or keep their promises can often be very hard. Um, but I wonder sometimes, I worry a lot about whether you know, so much of our message is just anger, 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 how bad the right is, how, we need to dest- how they're trying to destroy us. I don't think it's untrue, but I don't know, and I worry sometimes that the positive message, except maybe in the Pirate Party case it worked, but the positive message sometimes, you know, in Obama's case it worked the first time, it's not gonna work this time, but, but whether the positive message sometimes is a little too, you know, la la la, you know, you sound like a little, a little girl. You know, with her lollipop, or oh, a little boy, um, but just kind of, you know, being a little too hopeful and naive. I, I, don't, I don't know. But I mean, that's also a message for sort of the direction of the, I mean, your blog works very well, which I didn't realize this totally, that your blog focus on, focuses on the conservatives solely, which is interesting because that's not going to be a positive message. Yet it's <laughs> obviously worked, but it's obviously worked very well. You know, but the question also is over the long term, does it work? I mean, I know we certainly saw over the years with the blogs that our, our readers just got depressed after a while. Certainly, especially once we got into power, you know, because the, the Congress came first that we won, and then the White House two years later, people just started getting really depressed and leaving. Because they said, you know what, I'm just tired of it. This is just, not, not angry at us, just saying, I can't read every day about how our guys suck, I'm just leaving. You know, and they don't give as much money anymore to Democrats, it's just, and even the Obama thing now. I mean, you know, I'm coming around on Obama for the election, and a lot of my readers, they can tell, and they're pissed. For us, means angry. For him, it means drunk and back, John. But um, for, the, for the Brits, but uh, but yeah, they're, they're not happy. I mean, the readers are like, "What do you What do you mean? You're saying he's doing good things on gay rights?" I'm like, "Well, he is. What do you want me to say?" But you, you know, he's fooling you, and they're they, they've gotten too sold into the fact that that you know he's not going to keep his promises. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you know. I mean, for sort of what the, your guys blogging in general. I mean, is it how much of it is focused in general for the rest of you on? looking at the right, you know, criticizing them versus sort of promoting this progressive agenda and what you guys want, or, or doesn't your party really know what it wants to do once it gets in power? Because I heard that was sort of an issue too being discussed. 